Hey guys, I know it's Thursday, so you might be expecting an episode of Basics, but I have a special surprise for you instead. I'm excited and honored to introduce a new show on the channel starring Sola El Whaley, where we put her considerable knowledge and skill set to the test in a twisted cooking challenge. This new show was made possible by some recent sponsorships on the channel and some amazing new additions to Team Babish, and of course, your unending kindness and support. It's thrilling to be able to grow the channel in new directions with new people, and today, thanks to you, the channel takes on a new name, the Babish Culinary Universe, or BCU. So let's kick it off with the first episode of Stump Sola. The second episode comes out this Saturday. I really hope you guys enjoy it, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for continually trying new things with me over the past five years. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Andrew Ray. And I'm Sola El Whaley. And today we're talking mac and cheese. I love mac and cheese. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's good. Yeah. Cheese. Mac. What's not to like? <laughs> so we're gonna make what different kinds of mac and cheese today? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to stop Sola. Sola El Whaley, are you ready to spin the wheel? There's a wheel? Yes, there's a wheel. It's right in front of you. This is the official Stump Sola wheel. This is going to put a spin on what you're cooking today. Well, how about it, audience? Cheer on. Give that wheel a spin. Oh, 18th century. That means you need to make mac and cheese in the style it would be made in the 18th century. What do you think? Did they have mac and cheese in the 18th century? I have no idea. There was no craft. I can't be sure. It is an old brand. Probably no Barilla elbow pasta. Again, this could be a legacy okay. family Italian brand. Okay, so I'm gonna have to make my pasta, make my cheese, and probably cook over an open fire. Probably. All right, yeah, that sounds fun, yeah. Well, Sola, as usual, I can't wait to try it, and I'm glad I don't have to make it. We'll see you on the other side. century mac and cheese. It's not gonna look anything like the mac and cheese from right now, but you know, it's the 18th century. Okay, let me write this down. We're gonna do it over an open flame. We'll make pasta out of some heritage stone ground flour, which is pretty easy to find these days. I think I'm gonna use a lot of cheese because back then they died young. There was no concern, long-term health. People just ate all the cheese they wanted to eat and then they died. Um, was cow milk as common? Maybe it needs to be like sheep's milk. I don't know, I don't know. This might not be good. Yeah, I'll look at some books. We'll figure this out. All right, so 18th century, I don't think they have an induction burner. So I'm gonna try and cook everything over a fire. I'm kind of worried about building a fire because I've not done that before. Let me gather my kindling. I don't, I've not done any research on how to start a fire, but I feel like I'm gonna put this in there and then get that going and then put wood on top. We've got a couple rocks and I feel like if I hit them together, something will happen. All right, we're just going in. Huh, huh. Let me figure out my form. I feel like I'm gonna, it's in my eye. <laughs> All right, maybe this isn't gonna work. How do we lie? I think this works, you know? Back then, didn't they have like communal ovens that were just always on? We borrowed some of that eternal flame to light our 18th century fire. Hey, it worked! This is a lot easier when you're trying to make fire with fire. Who knew? Things are happening. Okay, wow. This is gonna burn down a bit and I'm going to make my spetzel butter next. So I know we're doing mac and cheese, but pasta today is made with really finely ground semolina. And I don't imagine that they had flour ground that fine. So I wanna go for a more like rustic shape of pasta. And turns out spetzel, some historians claim, was invented in the early 1700s. So it feels like a perfect way to go. And some people say that the original mac and cheese was made with spetzel. But it was just spetzel with a whole bunch of cheese. But we're still gonna do a cream sauce. Should we? I don't know. We'll see what happens. There might be hot dogs in there. Oh god. <laughs> Let's get in there. Cooking used to be like a true labor of love. Now we just turn on a sand mixer. But look at that. Okay, I barely have been mixing, but because we're using this high protein flour, it's already getting really nice gluten development. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this rest. We're gonna get our water boiling. We're gonna start making our bechamel. And I'm gonna grill another hot dog. Oh God. Oh my God. 
Why is it so loud? It was so quiet this whole time. This looks like an authentic 18th century torture device. <sighs> okay, so the last time we were here, the concrete at the bottom of the pit started to explode. So we got a little grill, filled it up with stuff, and we're gonna just pretend that this is a raging 18th century fire. 18th century? 17th? 18th century fire. <laughs> it's still scary. Ugh. Ugh. Woo. Okay. All right. That feels secure. I'm gonna just do a squat. Yeah. So what do I do now? I'm gonna start working on the bechamel. Why the hell not? Okay, I'm gonna start with some butter. Look at her go. Look at that go. Look at it melt. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. What a fun life, huh? Oh. Oh. All right, so I want about equal parts flour and butter. Perhaps that was a little too much flour. There's no turning back now. Hey guys, this is actually coming out. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna start adding the milk. The 18th century, you know? They didn't know how to put lids with handles. This is it, I got stumped. Hold on, okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on, nobody help me. I don't think that's gonna work. Somebody help us. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh bad. Oh my god. When I was a kid, I would start little fires in these little holes that I would dig, and I'd take, I would take, hold on, hold on. I would take a walnut shell and pretend the little walnut shells were my pots, and I'd put them in the fire, and I'd make a tiny, tiny bit of rice, bake a little small cake. I didn't have any friends. You really did have to put a lot more love and stuff into food before. Oh God, this glove. I'm really starting to feel the heat. Corduroy apron was not the best choice. I wanted to get overalls for this, but denim wasn't invented until much later. Corduroy? No. <laughs> the spelt gives it a really nice nuttiness. That's actually really tasty. This is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> let's let's boil some spatzel. Spatzle? 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 Spat. Oh yeah. We have boublage. <sighs> I haven't done this before, but I've seen it online. We're gonna wet the board. That's supposed to help it not stick. Okay, so the goal is I wanna have like a line of dough that I'm gonna cut. And let's look, give it a little whirl. Hey! Guys, I think it's working! Look at that. Look at us go. Look at that go. Oh God, stickage. Let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the noodle out and taste. I feel like these kinds of noodles, usually when they float, they're done. Spatula! So I guess I'm just gonna do this for a while until we have enough to fill up the skillet. Look at that, I've come a long way from just boiling water in walnut shells. Okay, spetzel, good to go. Bechamel, cheese. Now I'm gonna bring it all together. That's it, guys. We did it, so easy. Why get this stuff out of the box? Gonna add some Gruyere from a basket. So 18th century. Okay, we're starting to smooth out. Oh my God, my arms are tired. <sighs> Ooh, huh? Huh, you don't care. Okay, now let's add some curds. Cheese curds melt really easily and quickly. That's why I'm adding it at the end. So we get a little stretch, a little goo, a little curd. I feel like there's twice as much cheese as there is spatzla at this point. Home stretch, buddy. Ugh. Oh yeah. Ooh, baby, I love my cheese. I don't know. I thought this through. You didn't think I thought this through. I have a plan. I don't know if it's gonna like pull, but we're getting good, good boublage. So, it's nice and bubbly. Cheese is nice and melty. Everything's folded together. I think we're ready to go, ready to eat. It only took five hours to get here, guys. We did it. We did it, guys. You made 18th century mac and cheese. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it looks unbelievable. I was in awe the entire time watching you work. I'm, not, I'm gonna be in awe watching you trying to eat with that. It feels so med medieval to me. There's so much cheese. I don't know where to go. Here we go. It's 
delicious. It's so good. Cheesy? So cheesy. Weedy? Like, yes, the Gruyere brings all the funk, but it's got this like nuttiness to balance it all out, thanks to the, the whole wheat everything. I am just gonna say, I think you were not stumped by this. Do you think you were stumped by this? No, I don't think I was stumped. I think that the fire pit was stumped. This was a big challenge for- Sola stumped the fire pit. Yeah, I guess so. Big time. This is truly an accomplishment. And- It was fun. An incredible way to kick off your new show, Stump Sola. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you whip up next time. Check it out, stay tuned. Will we stump Sola? And this time I will not look at you. I'm going to stay confused until you tell me to stop. I'm actually confused, so. <laughs> I'm afraid. You're afraid I'm the one that has to cook this. I've peed my pants. There's more pants. There's always more pants. I had a fire going like this in my apartment with the flute shut. What does this have to do with 18th century mac and cheese? This has nothing to do with 18th century mac and cheese. Am I gonna eat it? Yes. <laughs> You just made me film the whole thing. <laughs> yes, you're gonna eat it. <laughs> yes, there's a wheel. You got a wheel, guys? Is there a wheel? He's homesick. The wheel is COVID? Topical.